Welcome back to another episode of In-Depth Angling. I'm excited to record this as we are taking a look at the walleye in Stockton Lake, breaking down the patterns, locations, techniques, and tips to help you catch more and bigger walleye this spring. Before I go into covering everything in this video, if you guys are new to the channel, fish Stockton Lake, or want to catch more walleye, if you would be so kind as to consider subscribing to support me make videos like this for you, and it will keep you in the loop for when new videos get released to the channel so you aren't missing out. Let's dive into this thing. The Missouri Department of Conservation stocks walleye each year into Stockton Lake. 2022 electrofishing survey showed that 82% of the walleye measured longer than 15 inches, making for what should be some amazing walleye fishing on Stockton Lake in 2023. In the early spring, walleye can be found up the river arms of the lake into the tributaries in pre-spawn and spawning phases, as well as shallower areas of the main lake, riprap, and rock structure. They get enough wind and current through the area for walleye to be able to spawn because their eggs need enough oxygen and can't have too much sediment on them for them to be able to live. The pre-spawn phase really is a good time to be out and catching them. Those fish are bulking up before the spawn and they are out feeding heavily primarily on shad and getting ready to go and do their thing up the river or on some of that rocky structure that I mentioned before. Walleye spawn once water temperature reached the 40 to 50 degree range. The bite can be tough though as they aren't feeding as much as they actually go into do their spawning. Really the peak for that's around 45 to 47 degrees from what I found. That's really when they start to go do their thing up there in the shallow at night. Male walleye are the first ones to move up river or to the windy shoreline and the generally larger female walleye move up to spawn a little bit behind them as they wait in deeper water near spawning areas. The walleye spawn on Stockton Lake usually happens sometime between late February and early April, depending on how mild or cold of a winter Stockton Lake gets and how soon the water warms up into the 40 to 50 degree range. And once the spawn actually starts for these fish, it usually lasts three or four weeks. I'm going to show you guys some examples of some areas that these fish will be moving through up here. I have an idea of where I'm at here. Uh, we are all the way up here on the southern section to the Stockton Lake. The rest of the lake is kind of further north here. I'll zoom back in, um, but we're going up the river arms. And that's going to be a thing that you're going to hear me talk about quite a bit in this video. Walleye will kind of congregate out here during the pre-spawn along these old river beds, along where these uh, bluffs are at and some of these old flats. And they'll feed up a little bit throughout the winter time through here. And as we get closer and closer to the pre-spawn, the males will start to move up closer towards the river area here. This is coming up by Turnback Creek. Uh, a lot of people go up there and fish this area for walleye during the spring. There's a lot of people that catch white bass at this area as well. And they will run up and they will spawn in either of these creeks that are flowing up through here. So as far as you can boat up in here, sometimes you can get up there and find a decent sized hole where you might have eight or nine foot of water in it. And if you can find those areas with eight or nine foot of water into these river arms up here, where there may be some eddies, some bigger rock, those are going to be great areas. Those fish are going to hold out and wait for the right water temperature to hit. Kind of a common theme here as well on the other branch that comes down here. There's several different islands. A lot of people that actually come up here are in kayak or canoe. There's some small john boats that can make it back up in here as well. But just be warned, there are some stumps. If you're not wanting to go up that far, you could still catch a lot of these fish as they're moving in and out. Um, a lot of them will come up and they all have to really come right through this area here by the bridge. As you guys can see, there's a land bridge that shoots out over here. It really funnels everything to where they have to pass through that area. That's a great area to go and try to pick off some of these fishes that are moving up river. This is right over there by uh, the Greenfield Access on the lake. Um, so it's not far from a boat ramp either. It's a good little area. Any of the old channel walls that are out through here as well, you can catch those fish out there leading up to the spawn uh, as these fish are moving around looking for the bait fish. If you can find the shad and large schools off of these old river channels out throughout the lake on these southern sections here up the riverway, you're going to do very well in locating those walleye as they're really putting on the weight before they move up on the river. And it's the same pattern over here near Aldrich as well as they're moving up this big river arm here. The channel gets extremely narrow over here towards the Aldrich boat ramp, but there is some deeper holes here as you guys can see that white area there is uh, over 20 foot deep in that at normal pool. So you can catch some walleye that are moving in and out of this area here. It's another funnel area right where it bottlenecks down and it's a deep hole there. So a lot of different fish would use that way to move up and down through the river channel there and they move up into the river to go spawn. The fish will be moving in and out of here and all along this bluff, all along this river channel 
Chad will be sitting out through here. The walleye will be out here. I'm going to show you guys some other areas down here. So we come across over here. There's a nicer hole. It pushes right up here against the bluffy bank that's here. This is the Little Sac River arm that used to exist here, the old riverbed. And that's going to be really what they're using to move up that deeper channel and staging up for this pre-spawn. The other area that they will go and spawn at, not quite as many numbers of them go and do this, but anywhere down here by the old quarry uh, near Crabtree Cove, there's a lot of big rocky structure. Um, there's a lot of nice rocky bank over here along the actual dam itself. It's all riprap. It gets a ton of wind in here because there's nothing really obstructed, especially if it's coming from the south. It gets a lot of wind and waves pushing up against this. So that's a really great area there. Uh, if they're running any water at all coming out of the dam, there's going to be extra current right here off of these different points and flats that stick off right here in a big channel drop where the old river channel is. So there's lots of areas there that those fish will set up throughout the winter time, pre-spawn, and then even move up into the spawn. They'll kind of cruise up and down and along this bank here. It's great for bank fishermen. Boat fishermen can get to it as well. Um, just it's a lot easier to uh, go over here whenever it's not quite as windy of a day just because the uh, the waves get crazy down in this section. I mean, they really get rolling. I'll show you guys. Nothing is there to block this wind, really. It's got pretty much a straight shot down here from the bridge area all the way here. There's a little island that's there, but it doesn't really do much for you for blocking it. So it's a several mile long stretch where those waves have plenty of room to start rolling and you pick up quite a bit of some height and volume as they're heading towards the north end of the dam if you get a wind from the south. So that's a great area that those fish have enough current, enough wave action. They like that kind of stuff. That's the areas that they go and spawn. Another great little area here as well. It's not really on Stockton Lake, but just below the dam here, the fish will set up on the Sac River and uh, they can't go up any further because the dam blocks them. So anything that is escapee walleye from Stockton Lake down to the river here that wants to go and try to spawn, well, their instincts tell them to run up river. They run up river enough to the point where they're here at the dam. So just below the dam there, there's a little bit of some bank fishing that you can do as well. If you don't have a boat, that's a pretty decent place to go and try to catch a couple walleye. Walleye are nocturnal and tend to move shallower after dusk or low light conditions from a cloudy or windy day. They become more active, feeding more aggressively on bait fish. When fish are more active and suspended in the water column during low light conditions, I like to use suspending jerk baits that can be paused and work differently to get reaction strikes from walleye. I'll show you guys a couple examples of this. This is a six cents provoke uh, style of jerk bait. You just want something that's going to suspend in that water column. I like to let my cadences run between four to six seconds on pauses, working the bait with my rod tip, not really trying to pull the bait through the water, but just making it dark in the middle of the water column, letting it pause in front of their face and having it twitch right there. That will get them to react to that bait, whether you're up in the river arms, whether you're down there by the dam on that riprap. And uh, those are great to fish for those suspended fish, especially if you're in low light conditions. Another one that's a favorite of mine is the Smithwick Rogues. This thing's got like a red face to it and a silver body with a gold back. Works really good, stands out very well in stained water up the riverway. Does very good up there because we tend to have a lot of spring runoff during those times uh, the walleye are trying to go spawn. This is a color that tends to stand out a little bit more during those situations and can really be able to get some of those suspended walleye fired up. The other thing that you can do is use small crappie jigs and swim baits that can be fished at any depth the fish move to and they give a more subtle presentation. These can be snap jigged off the bottom. These can be drifted down through current seams in the river. They can be worked really right over the top of those rocks if you're on the main lake looking for those rocky structures that those fish will use in that bigger wind pushed area. Live bait on or near the bottom, either by trolling bottom bouncers or by jigging can produce bites throughout different times of the spring. You can tip some of these little crappie jigs with the minnow or you can just fish just a jig and minnow out there on the bottom as well, up for those shallower fish. Once temperatures rise above the spawning range on Stockton, look for walleye to move back to the main lake in their post-spawn phase. Bottom bouncers work great, trolled with a minnow or nightcrawler to help you cover water to find active walleye. 
that will school up over points, flats, drop-offs, islands, and channels as they move into aggressive feeding stage again. This is by far my favorite time to go out and try to catch some of these fishes as they're moving back out. They're very hungry, active, and feeding again. And with the water temperatures beginning to rise, their metabolism rises too, so they're feeding more frequently. They enter more of a feeding stage again like they are during the pre-spawn, but this time they're a little more aggressive, willing to chase bait, and feeding primarily on shad as we get closer towards summer. Some examples of this and where they're going to be staging up at after they're coming back out of the rivers. As I zoom in here, we're going back past this. They're going to go right through this old river channel again. Uh, they're going to go right up into some of these different creek coves that are very small here, um, and, but they have quite a bit of bait fish in them. And they have a little bit of some decent depth as well. So those are going to be key areas. Uh, this flat right off of here, off the main river channel, is a great area to go and target. It's really dependent on where the bait fish are going to be at. If you can find the bait fish during this time of year, and they're moving into their post-spawn phase leading up to summer, you're going to have a lot higher chance of finding those actively feeding walleye. These different shallow coves that are just off of these bluffs too are great, especially at night as they move up shallow and are nocturnal. So they feed more heavily whenever the uh, the sun goes down, dawn, dusk, any time of the night really, and do quite well. These larger creek coves though are going to be the ones that are going to hold the most bait this time of year that I find. There's tons of bluegill, there's tons of shad. Don't be afraid to throw some different styles of baits this time of year as well. Uh, bass lures will work at times. Just kind of keep experimenting with different things. These fish are kind of unpredictable. They will move quite a bit then following those bait fish and they are really the most aggressive that they're going to be all year long. Keep in mind that walleye don't all spawn at the same time so you will likely have pre-spawn and post-spawn fish around even when the water temps are in the spawning range of 40 to 50 degrees. It's not going to be the majority but don't be afraid to come out here and try for some of these post-spawn walleye if you just have a bigger boat and you don't have access or ability to go up to those river arms and fish as much especially as we get further into the top end of that range closer towards 50 degrees come out here you might be able to find a few fish before everybody else does as water temperatures warm above the 50 degree mark the majority of walleye will be on the move and you should be too as these fish don't stay in one place for an extended time trolling is your best friend this time of year to find active walleye whether you troll with crankbaits or bottom bouncer rigs one of my favorite all-time crankbaits to use this time of year on stockton lake is the flicker shad it's got a tighter wobble that imitates the bait fish size really well this time of year. You can also use Rapala Shad Wraps, Bomber A's, Hot and Talk Crankbaits. They all do really well at producing reaction strikes and getting down to the depth that you need to fish in these river channels up here. Some of these little crappie jigs can be fished as well. It's really wide open for what you want to try to use. And if you're going to go out and cast around and you're not going to troll rattle traps and lipless crankbait style of baits, they can be fished throughout the entire water column. They produce reaction strikes very well. You can fish them fast, you can fish them slow, near the bottom, anywhere you want to really. Just don't fish them in woody cover or bigger rock. Near the bottom, they get hung up quite a bit. The point is to be flexible during the spring with your presentations and areas you are fishing. Conditions change fast and to be able to keep catching fish, we have to adapt. So keep trying different things until you find what the walleye are after. They're going to continue to move out and keep going towards the main lake area here. There's flooded timber that they will sometimes be in and around, especially if the bait fish are around them. Uh, a lot of people associate uh, woody structure with crappie and panfish and bass. Walleye still use them, especially if there's a good amount of depth around or if it's a really sunny, calm day. Don't be surprised to see them pull up underneath the shade of some of those standing trees or brush piles that are nearby. They're great areas to draw in a lot of different bait fish and they provide a little bit of some uh, shade for them as they really like the darkness. As we head further and further into the post spawn, you're going to find more and more of these fish down the river channels here. Channels and main channel really opens up a lot more, it gets deeper and we start to get more into a summer pattern. The same thing will happen over here by Aldrich. These fish will leave out of the river system here, head back up through that same little narrow bottleneck areas that I showed you earlier. Those are great areas whether the fish are moving in or moving out. They have to go through that little area there and it really confines where they can go. So if you're going to be fishing anywhere, um, one specific place at all during this time, you should try those bottleneck areas because all the fish have to move in and out of there. Just a matter of being there at the right time when there are schools coming in and out. These fish will continue to push out through here. A lot of this area here is a lot deeper. And as soon as you get to this white section here, it's a lot more like 20 to 30 foot deep out here. And the channel is a really great ditch for them to kind of pop in and out of, especially if you have a cold front move in or you have some sort of really weird weather event where maybe it has a flood and you have some muddier water coming in. 
Expect those walleye to hold tighter to the bottom, closer to that river channel, and not be quite as active. Again, we have lots of flooded timber out there here. Uh, the channel really opens up. We get a couple little islands, a lot of different hard bends. Any kind of current flow rolling through this part of the lake here is a big thing because these channels are uh, kind of swinging up here against some of these different banks. So the water flowage is going to come from the bottom right of your screen over here and move up to this section here. So as it's moving across that, it's going to hit right across some of these points through some of this flooded timber up here against this bank here. And that's going to really centralize where the bait fish are. It's going to position the walleye differently. So paying attention if we have a high water during the spring, usually there's a good amount of current going through the lake because the dam is running out some of the water through its generators or it could be uh, coming out through the floodgates themselves. Keep an eye on that. It's going to help you figure out where these fish are going to be at. They're not going to be back in the coves quite as much if we have a good amount of current going on during the post-spawn as well. They're going to be more out towards the main lake stuff. If you have no current or very little current, especially at night, expect these fish to slide up here into the backs of some of these creek coves where the bait fish are. The north end of the lake here is the cleanest water on the lake in general, the deepest and widest area as well. This is an area where the fish are going to be in their spawning phases the longest uh, compared to the upper river arms. Don't be surprised to see the river arms be significantly warmer by four or five, maybe even six or seven degrees at times, depending on whether or not we have warm rain come in through there. Because if we do, that'll warm up that water and get those fish to move upstream a lot faster. These fish down here might still be in a wintering mode and they won't be moved up on this riprap bank quite as fast as they are down that direction. I hope you found this video helpful and you learned something about Stockton Lake or the spring walleye fishing has to offer and that this helps you catch more walleye on the lake throughout the spring. Thank you to everyone who stayed to the end of the video. I really appreciate all the new subscribers that have been making this channel grow so much. I can't thank you enough because without you this channel doesn't exist so thanks to you for supporting me make more content like this video for you. Leave me a thumbs up down below this video so I know if you liked it and found it helpful. I know a lot of people have been asking for more walleye content on the channel. Comment down below what you would like to see me make next. Till next time, tight lines, and remember to explore deeper. There's more out there.